In today's video, I will be talking about the North African country of Morocco. In the year 711 AD, troops mostly formed by the Moors from Morocco and the Northern African Maghreb region, invaded, colonized and ruled over the Iberian Peninsula in Europe, Sicily and Malta for over 700 years. There is a lot to unpack about this country, so, buckle up and let's go. Morocco is a country located in the Maghreb region of North Africa. It overlooks the Mediterranean Sea to the north and the Atlantic Ocean to the west, with land borders with Algeria to the east and Western Sahara status disputed to the south. Morocco also claims the exclaves of Ceuta, Melilla and Peñón de Vélez de la Gomera, all of them under Spanish jurisdiction, as well as several small Spanish-controlled islands off its coast. The capital is Rabat and the largest city is Casablanca. Morocco spans an area of 710,850 square kilometers, and has a population of over 37 million. Since the foundation of the first Moroccan state by Idris I, in 788 AD, the country has been ruled by a series of independent dynasties, reaching its zenith under Almoravid and Almohad rule, when it spanned parts of Iberia and northwestern Africa. The Portuguese Empire began in Morocco in the 15th century, following Portuguese conquests along the Moroccan coast, founding settlements which lasted into the 17th and 18th centuries. The Marinid and Saudi dynasties resisted foreign domination into the 17th century, allowing Morocco to remain the only northwest African country to avoid Ottoman occupation. The Alawite dynasty, which rules to this day, seized power in 1631. The country's strategic location near the mouth of the Mediterranean attracted the interest of Europe, and in 1912, Morocco was divided into French and Spanish protectorates, with an international zone in Tangier. It regained its independence in 1956, and has since remained comparatively stable and prosperous by regional standards, with the fifth largest economy in Africa. Is Morocco a poor country? As at the year 2019, Morocco had a GDP per capita of $3,204.10. Despite its economic progress, 4 million Moroccans remain in poverty and live on less than $4 a day. Poverty in Morocco remains an issue. What is the official languages of Morocco? The official languages are Tamazite and Moroccan Arabic, however French is the recognized business and higher education language. Tamazite language is spoken by a large majority of Moroccan people. Amazai people are known as a native of a North Africa including Morocco. Due to its proximity to the southern coast of Spain, many people in the northern regions of Morocco speak Spanish, while English and German are often spoken in popular tourist destinations. Most urban Moroccans understand some English, however, you should not assume that English will be understood and it can also be useful to know some French. What is unique about Morocco? Morocco is known for being one of the most tolerant of the Arab nations. The country is relatively safe, peaceful, and stable. Moroccan people, both Arabic and Berber, are also noted for their warm hospitality and warm, friendly nature. Is Morocco safe for tourists? Safety is why Morocco is a favored destination in North Africa, as crimes committed against tourists are extremely low, and severely punished by Moroccan law. However, you should always check your State Department website before traveling to any country. Do I need a visa for Morocco? No visa is required for American, Canadian and European visitors to gain entry to Morocco. Are there any clothing restrictions? Typically women and men in Morocco wear the traditional all-covered jellabas. In addition, women typically wear scarves hijab, to cover the hair, while older men wear hats. However, in the more metropolitan areas Western-style clothing is the norm. Younger generations, professional women wear Western suits in the business world, and transition to more Western clothing, shirts, blouses, tank tops, jeans, shorts, skirts, and others, in a more relaxed environment. Similarly professional young men wear Western-style suits, shirts and jeans, shorts, etc. The choice of clothing depends largely on location, town, city, age, economic status and occupation of the individuals. If you are planning a trip to Morocco, the following are the areas you must explore. Number 1. The Jardin Majorelle The Majorelle Garden is a two-and-half-acre botanical garden and artist's landscape garden in Marrakech, Morocco. 
It was created by the French Orientalist artist, Jacques Majorel over almost 40 years, starting in 1923, and features a cubist villa designed by the French architect, Paul Sinor in the 1930s. Nicely designed and maintained gardens, similar to those of Generalife in Granada, Spain. It's a good place to recoup from the intensity of the market atmosphere of Marrakesh. The garden is breathtaking. You can spend hours there admiring the plants and architecture. Number 2. The Palacio da Bahia The Bahia Palace is a late 19th century palace in Marrakesh, Morocco. The palace was first begun by C. Musa, Grand Vizier of Alawite Sultan Muhammad ibn Abd al-Rahman, in 1859 and then continued and expanded by his son C. Ba Ahmed ibn Musa, Grand Vizier of Sultan Moulay Abdelaziz between 1894 and 1900. Today it is a well-known historic monument and tourist attraction in the city. C. Musa was descended from a family of black slaves which served the Moroccan Mazen royal government and reached the highest offices in the country. He was first Hajib, similar to a chamberlain, then Grand Vizier under Muhammad ibn Abd al-Rahman, who reigned from 1859 to 1873. He began the construction of the palace in 1859 and continued during the 1860s. Today, the Grand Riyadh or Large Riyadh Garden and its adjoining rooms in the northern part of the palace date from C. Musa's time and are also consequently known as the Dar C. Musa. The two grand chambers on the east and west sides of the garden contain an inscription which dates their construction to 1866-67. This palace is a pearl of Moroccan architecture with lots of interesting architectural details. Its uniquely wooden elements in the form of doors, shutters and wonderful cedar wood ceilings attract a visitor's attention. Number 3. Lay Jardin Secret The origins of the complex date back to the Saudian dynasty, more than 400 years ago. Rebuilt in the mid-19th century at the behest of an influential Cade of the Atlas Mountains, Lay Jardin Secret has been the home of some of Morocco and Marrakesh's most important political figures. Today you are able to fully appreciate it, thanks to the recent renovation, Le Jardin Secret is part of the great tradition of stately Arab Andalusian and Moroccan palaces. As a result visitors can discover its gardens and buildings, which are outstanding examples of Islamic art and architecture. The Riyadh Museum Le Jardin Secret is one of the largest and most ancient palaces of the Medina of Marrakesh. It is a place that has kept ancient structures intact that are of an extraordinary cultural value, linked to the art of gardens, architecture and Arab hydraulics. Popularly known as Riyadh Laukrasi, it has been the sumptuous residence of the Cade Ubihi, who was the head of the Haha tribe. The Riyadh rises up in the Mwasin quarter, on the main thoroughfare and but a few steps away from the Mwasin fountain and Mwasin mosque, and comprises two large gardens and one of the highest towers of the Medina. The museum provides you with a wealth of historical information about Marrakesh's architecture, water, and gardens. You will also find a boutique, a bookshop and two cafes inside Le Jardin Secret. The cafes offer you up fresh, homemade products that you can eat in lush and peaceful settings. This beautifully designed garden is hidden in the heart of the Red City, and out of sight. Number 4. Medina of Marrakesh The word, Medina, itself simply means, city, or town, in modern-day Arabic. A Medina quarter is a distinct historical city section found in a number of North African cities, and in Malta. A Medina is typically walled, with many narrow and maze-like streets. The Medina of Marrakesh was founded between 1070 and 1072 A.D. by the Almoravids. Around this time, Marrakesh was a political, economic and cultural center for a long period. Its influence was felt throughout the Western Muslim world, from North Africa to Andalusia. It has several impressive monuments dating from that period, the Katubia Mosque, the Kasbah, the battlements, monumental doors, gardens, etc. Later architectural jewels include the Bandia Palace, the Ben Yusuf Madrasa, the Saadian Tombs, several great residences and Place Jama El Fna, a veritable open-air theater. Visiting the Medina is like stepping back in time, whatever you are looking to buy you would get it there, and on top of that, the people are very friendly. Number 5. Musée Yves Saint Laurent Marrakech Located in Marrakech, the Musée Yves Saint Laurent is a grand homage to the great Parisian fashion designer Yves Saint Laurent. 
housing a selection of clothing, haute couture accessories, and sketches from the Foundation Pierre Berger, Yves Saint Laurent, the museum both celebrates and conserves the work of Saint Laurent. The Parisian designer had a special affinity for Morocco, having restored and lived at the famed Majorelle Garden. This makes the museum's location nearby all the more appropriate. Designed by French architecture firm Studio Co. and opened in October 2017, the 4,000-square-meter complex houses permanent exhibition spaces, an auditorium, a 6,000-volume research library, a bookstore, and a café. In creating the space, Studio Co. set about researching St. Laurent's love of Morocco, which began with his 1966 purchase of a home in Marrakech. Number 6. El Badi Palace. El Badi Palace or Badi Palace is a ruined palace located in Marrakech, Morocco. The palace also known as Palace of Wonder, Brilliance, was commissioned by the Sultan Ahmad al-Mansur of the Saudian dynasty a few months after his accession in 1578, with construction and embellishment continuing throughout most of his reign. The palace, decorated with materials imported from numerous countries ranging from Italy to Mali, was used for receptions and designed to showcase the Sultan's wealth and power. It was one part of a larger Saudian palace complex occupying the Kasbah district of Marrakesh. The palace was neglected after Al-Mansur's death in 1603 and eventually fell into ruin after the decline of the Saudian dynasty. Its valuable materials, especially marble, were stripped away and reused in other buildings across Morocco. Today it is a major tourist attraction in Marrakesh as well as an exhibition space, notably, the minbar of the Kutubaya Mosque is displayed here. The palace was built by the Saudian Sultan Ahmad al-Mansur in 1578. It was constructed on the occasion of Moroccan victory over the Portuguese at the Battle of the Three Kings in the town of Qasar el Kabir near Tangier. This palace lost its glory after it was looted and stripped of the marble and building material after the fall of the Saudian dynasty. Most of it was taken to Meknes by Moulay Ismail. Now the palace stands in ruins. A tiny little area has been renovated and turned into a museum. You can see stables, dungeons, four sunken garden with huge pools and summer pavilions here. All this gives us a glimpse into the past and shows us how glorious the palace must have looked in its heydays. To see what this used to look like and how it was torn down is sad but lovely to imagine as you walk around the ruins. Number 7. Madrasa Ben Yusuf The Ben Yusuf Madrasa is an Islamic madrasa or college in Marrakesh, Morocco. Functioning today as a historical site, the Ben Yusuf Madrasa was the largest Islamic college in Morocco at its height. The madrasa is named after the adjacent Ben Yusuf Mosque founded by the Almoravid Sultan Ali ibn Yusuf who reigned between 1106 and 1142 AD. The madrasa building which stands today was commissioned by the Saudian Sultan Sidi Abdallah al-Ghalib, following a style established during the earlier Marinid period. Historically, madrasas have served as a center for learning, worship and community interaction. In addition to teaching Quranic tazfir and Islamic jurisprudence, Islamic schools often taught a wide variety of subjects, including literature, science and history. The Ben Yusuf Madrasa, in fulfilling these functions, was also one of the largest theological colleges in North Africa, reportedly able to accommodate upwards of 800 students. Closed down in 1960, the building was refurbished and reopened to the public as a historical site in 1982. The Ben Yusuf Madrasa currently attracts thousands of tourists every year and remains one of the most important historical buildings in Marrakesh. Number 8. Moroccan Active Adventures. Adventures range from the coast to outback while experiencing Moroccan culture, including camping under the desert stars, remote four-wheel drive adventures, riding quad bikes and soaking up the mountain vistas of Morocco. The adventure opens doors into a country and its culture allowing you to reach the heart of Morocco. You will see the dramatic scenery, meet Berbers and Touareg people, as well as have a taste of their culture and food. You are allowed to choose the adventures that best suit you to make your holiday memorable. The undulating sand dunes and palm-fringed oases of the Sahara, dramatic peaks and remote cosbas of the Atlas Mountains, the whitewashed wind-battered ramparts of Asora is a sensory overload in the best possible way. Number 9. Saudian Tombs. The Saudian Tombs are located just outside Marrakesh and were constructed during the reign of Sultan Ahmad al-Mansur in the late 16th century. 
This is the resting place of Al Mansur, his family, and other notable officials from that era. These tombs were discovered in 1917, restoration began shortly thereafter. Today, much of its original splendor has been restored. Sultan al Ghalib Abdullah constructed the first tomb to contain the body of his father and the founder of the Saudian Empire, Muhammad Ash Sheikh. The first leader of the Saudian dynasty died in 1557. The site was chosen due to its proximity to the important Kasbah Mosque, which dates back to the 1100s. The mosque is the largest Islamic place of worship in Marrakesh. Burials may have taken place in the area prior to this, but the Sultan was responsible for turning it into a royal graveyard. Sultan Ahmed el Mansur, the fifth and final Saudian ruler, was later responsible for the construction of many of the major buildings within the complex of the Saudian tombs. He wanted to construct beautiful memorials to honor the lives of those close to him and, of course, create a spectacular place of rest for when his own death occurred. While he did undertake work to beautify earlier tombs, his own tomb was the most impressive. This mausoleum, dating from 1557, on the south side of the Kasbah Mosque, contains interments of about 60 members of the Saudi dynasty, the most notable being Sultan Ahmad al-Mansur Important burials are inside the tomb building, while lesser members of the family are outside in the walled garden. Al Mansur lies in the exquisite chamber of the Twelve Pillars, with its imported Italian marble, intricate and geometric tile work, gilded honeycomb mukarnas, decorative plasterwork, and elaborate ceilings stunning in detail and vibrant color. The nearby chamber of the three niches houses important princes while some 170 chancellors and wives are interred in the garden. The courtyard mausoleum of Al Mansur's mother is beautifully inscribed with poetic blessings. Several decades after al Mansur's death, the Alawite Sultan Muley Ismail walled off the tombs to erase his predecessor's legacy. They were rediscovered in 1917 from aerial photographs, and lovingly restored by a French organization, the Beaux-Arts Service. The entrance to the tombs is on the Rue de la Casbah near the Casbah Mosque and the ruins of the El Badi Palace. Number 10. Manara Mall. Manara Mall is one of the largest shopping center in Marrakesh, opened in June 2015. The mall was initiated by the Pic Albatross Group and has a total surface of 50,000 square meters. It has two levels totaling 13,000 square meters dedicated as an indoor attraction park for kids called Kidzo. At night half of the population of Marrakesh is strolling along the street by the mall that features playful and colorful fountains. Stores are open late, they sell many items from the West, and staff tends to be younger and able to speak English. The mall is air-conditioned so it is nice to get out of the heat. So, that was all about the Kingdom of Morocco, a country in North Africa. Hope you liked this video. If you want to see more of these videos, let me know by subscribing to this channel and pressing the bell icon. Thank you, and see you next time with another video. Bye.